Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today we're looking at yet another kind of uh, dubious quality civilian market pistol, specifically the Scorpion Scarab. Now, I picked this up because I was, I was kind of interested in how it actually was made to resemble the Czech Scorpion, the VZ-61, because that pistol is actually, it's a, a very well made, very interesting, neat piece of, of firearms history. And so when I discovered that these had been made, and obviously you can see to the same basic outline, I was curious. So I, I got my hands on this one. Um, this was made by a company called Armitage uh, out of Florida, and only about 600 of them were ever made before they uh, went out of business, and you'll see why over the next few minutes. Um, the first thing that jumps out at you immediately is that compared to the Scorpion, this thing is absolutely massive. It's, it's just huge. Um, this thing is significantly bigger and also heavier than my uh, 45 1911. Um, the, the, the original real Scorpion could fit in about this space, just about. So um, the biggest difference right off the bat is that this is chambered for 9mm Luger using basically modified uh, Cobra or MAC-10 magazines. So it's a, a double stack, single feed magazine. The, the ones that came with it, like this, are all polymer. So not sure how long they would last. Um, you could modify um, a more typical magazine to, to work in this gun, basically by adding a notch right here. You can see this is designed to be used in the MAC because it's got the magazine catch here on the back. And they just cut an additional catch there to work with this pistol's magazine catch here. So if you take a look in the magazine well there, very simple mag catch, just pushes in and allows you to pry the magazine out. Does not drop free by any means. Now, mechanically, um, the Scorpion is a relatively simple gun. It's a blowback mechanism. It has twin guide rods, twin operating springs. Um, and the real Scorpions actually, of course, being full auto, they have a rate reducing mechanism in the grip. This thing is semi-auto only. Obviously, it's, uh, these were made in the 1980s in the US, so they're, they're not machine guns. Uh, so the pistol grip is just a, a solid uh, fiberglass or polymer mold. To disassemble this thing, we have a little plunger in the back. We push that in, and then we can pop it open. This is, again, fairly similar to the real Scorpion. Now, instead of a dual guide rod, it just has a single guide rod and recoil spring. And uh, this is the block that locks it into the back of the receiver. And we have the bolt. The bolt is also extremely simple. It is just a big square block, rides inside this bent um, sheet metal upper assembly. We've got an extractor in here, got a spring-loaded firing pin, and then you've got these two handles that sit in the front of the bolt. So that's kind of nice. It can be cocked from either side. That's about the only really good thing this thing, this pistol has going for it. And that's it as far as the upper is concerned. You've got a very short little barrel. Um, they did come threaded for a suppressor, uh, same thread as a MAC-10 suppressor. And then the fire control mechanism is actually kind of interesting in that it is almost a complete perfect copy of the AK fire mechanism. So if we look in here, we have this uh, spring-loaded um, sear, and then the front hooks, hammer. Uh, AK parts wouldn't actually interchange into this, but the design is identical. Now, the trigger pull sucks. Um, it's long and it's heavy kind of like you'd expect. The safety is a very simple uh, half round bar, and when you flip it to safe, it simply prevents, that's fire. When you flip it to safe, it simply prevents the trigger from being pulled. So pretty simple. It really is a safe pistol. It's not like there's anything that could uh, really go wrong and fire accidentally on this. So let's go ahead and put the bolt back in. And there we are. So that's all there is to it. It's straight blowback. Um, the sights are, are pretty terrible. See, there's a, a big wide cutout in the back and a, a really wide blade in the front, pretty short sight radius. 
compared to the overall length, the barrel is only this long. Uh, they did make 30 round magazines for them, obviously, and since they're modified Cobra mags, you could get a Cobra mag longer one to fit there. Uh, one interesting thing that I noticed uh, in the original literature that came with this pistol was uh, one sheet with a note that coming soon, you'd be able to buy these in 41 Action Express. So that kind of dates this thing. Uh, reliability, in my experience so far, has been pretty terrible. Um, a lot of feed problems. So we're going to load it up and uh, try out a few rounds and see if that changes, but I honestly don't really expect that it will. We're off to quite a good start here, aren't we? So, round failed to fire, and now it is stuck inside the bolt rail. The ejection port on this is on the top. There we go. Let's try that again. So on the second round, the cartridge nosedived into the feed ramp. Pop that one out, let's try it again. Nosedived into the feed ramp. Oh, crap. Then, when you manually cock it, you get a double feed. Extractor failed to snap over. Oh, there it goes. Trigger failed to reset. I think I've got three, mag three rounds left. Let's see if I can get them out. Hey, it actually finished the mag. So in order to test the Scarab Scorpion in its native environment, we figured we really needed to do a drive-by shooting. Uh, we don't have any Colombian cocaine dealers up here, so instead we found some local resident gangsters who offered to help us out. Jennings, man, it's a Jennings nut. Awesome. There he is. All right, so there you have it, guys. You can see this uh, didn't work all that well for me. I don't think it'd work all that well for anyone else either. There's really no good reason to have one of these. Although if you do want one, they do show up on Gunbroker from time to time, and they are rare with only about 600 made. And now you can see why. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com, and next time we'll do something a little more serious.